everyone and welcome back to my video series so I'm taking you taking you on a bit of a walk I just want to show you here barefoot on natural terrain I will explain what that means in later videos however this is part of my recovery and today I just want to talk about the training methods that I've used in the last two years in particular when it comes to staying injury free improving performance whilst maintaining my health and that's the most important part. I, when I got into running, I saw so many stories of people getting injured or sick and I was determined not to go down that path. From my football background, I was constantly injured, constantly getting sick and I was just over feeling like rubbish. So my main aim was to optimize my performance whilst optimizing my well-being. And in particular, what I found was I looked at so many different methods and there was one that kind of caught my eye and that was the Mathetone method and that's from Dr. Phil Mathetone but it was a guy called Floris Gaiman who was on YouTube and if you've not seen his videos I would suggest going to have a look at he's a awesome runner really good guy and we've ended up becoming really good friends and um, I was able to watch him run a sub three hour marathon and be able to talk like you like I am now which I was like that's pretty impressive so um and I know the Mathetol methods come under flack by some runners. However, I feel like they don't fully understand the concept of it. Now me, I come from a sporting background, a sports conditioning background. I also come from a stress referral background as well, a medical referral background. And making sure that you're not constantly pushing yourself and overreaching is really important and unfortunately runners are doing this so um yeah it definitely caught my eye and i was like right i'm going to follow this method and essentially what it is is you build your aerobic base and it just means that you run at a comfortable speed where or even walk um, and it's all based on keeping it nice and relaxed so you feel refreshed after training you don't want to feel like you've run a race every time you train and what should happen over time if you are healthy and relatively stress-free because I don't think anyone is stress-free nowadays is your body is able to absorb the training easier which then allows you to have the positive adaptations from there you get faster while keeping your heart rate at a certain level and then when it comes to races and other events you can up your training you can go for sprints you can have high heart rate training sessions however you've got that steady foundation and that's what I focused on for the first, which I'm still doing this to be honest with you, for the last two years, and it's paid dividends for me. So how you work your Mathetone out is essentially, you take your age away from 180, now I'm 35, so I take, 100, I take 35 from 180, which is around 145 beats per minute, and I am never going above that when it comes to building my base training. I can stay below it, I can go as low as I want, and when I first started, it was a huge shock to my ego just because I thought I was fit. You know, I'm a personal trainer. I train pretty much every day. And I found that I was doing kind of like a shuffle jog walk thing. And it was taking me around seven minutes to run a K. Um, which, if you're used to running, is for a lot of people a lot slower than they expect to be able to run. However, within a couple of weeks, I found I was getting faster. I found I was more energized and then within I think it was two or three months I had dropped down already to around a 530k so I was had already dropped down quite significantly and my last training cycle would have been when I was prepping for my half marathon I was able to keep my math pace at around 445 to 430 per k so that's pretty good you know I mean for a lot of runners to be able to run under five minute k's is kind of what we try to aim for and that's the kind of the standard when I've looked online so I found it's worked true to me and even now I'm prepping for my next race I'm running below my math pace and I found I've started off slow and as the weeks progress I'm getting faster and faster because my body isn't too stressed from the training and from my lifestyle and it's allowing me to absorb that training and I'm just getting progressively faster and faster. So that is the training kind of side of it. It's, and it's spending time on your feet. So 
Right now, this is a recovery session for my morning run. As I mentioned before, I'm barefoot, I'm walking on a trail, and the whole purpose of this is to strengthen my feet, but it's also just to allow my body to stay moving. I'm a huge fan of being able to move as often as you can throughout the day. We spend too much time sitting down, wearing incorrect footwear, and we're wondering why we have Achilles or calf issues. They're probably one of the main reasons behind it. So getting out into nature, especially trail running as well. I found, I wish I would known about trail running when I first started instead of running on concrete. Because when you run on trails, you tend to find that it's very forgiving on the joints. Whereas when you run on roads, it, it can be pretty sore, especially as you're getting older. So um, yeah, so that's kind of just what I've been doing for the last two years. And as I say, my times have gone down. So my first half marathon was 135, then it went down to 130, then it was 127. And my next one I'm aiming for is around 125 and between 125 to 120. And then at the end of the year, I'm trying to aim for around 115. And I will still be using this method. And when it comes to the race events, I'll have like 12 weeks where I increase the intensity. I will run a bit faster, but there's still the bulk of my work is making sure that my heart rate is nice and low. I'm not putting too much stress on myself and I'm allowing my body to recover by eating well and sleeping well. Two main things, if you want to get into running, you've got to be good at these two. If you're not, if you're not eating the right sort of food, you're not healing correctly, and if you're not sleeping, you're starting the next day to deficit. Eventually that starts to spiral out of control. We get too far into that and hormonally we get burnt out. Muscle wise, we're not strong. Injuries start happening, tendons start snapping, and we are on the sidelines, which is the last thing that you want. <coughs> Excuse me. I do apologize about the um, cicadas. Uh, they are loud in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, that's it. So uh, if you like this, and I'm gonna continue doing these uh, videos, please subscribe, because I will give you more and more information about this and i'm hoping that the more people that watch this the more they start adopting some of the key points that i'm talking about here and start seeing the benefits of using this so uh yep yeah, if you liked it i mean if you like the video obviously click the like button subscribe for more and uh yeah i'll be on within probably the next couple of days so uh take care and look after yourself <laughs>